Hello, welcome to Bluebell Storytime Online. I'm Mandy Cantrell, Miss Mandy from the B.B. Comer Library here in Sylacauga. And I've got some a couple of Christmas books to share with you about reindeer. And the first one, of course, is Rudolph. This is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It is written by Barbara Shook Hazen, but it's adapted from the original story by Robert L. May. I'd like to thank them and the publisher, Western Publishing Company, for allowing me to share this book with you. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, one of my favorites. Once there was a reindeer named Rudolph who lived at the North Pole in Toyland. Rudolph was younger and smaller than the other reindeer there. They all had proud, tall antlers. Rudolph's antlers were only tiny stubs. Worst of all, Rudolph had a nose that was big and bright red. It was so red it glowed in the dark. Poor Rudolph. He wanted to be like the other reindeer in Toyland. Oh, to have a small brown nose instead of a big, bright red one. The other reindeer made fun of Rudolph and called him names. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, they teased over and over again until tears glistened on Rudolph's large red nose. They kicked up snowballs with their tiny hoofs and covered Rudolph with a blanket of white fluffy snow. Sometimes the other reindeer made a circle around Rudolph and sang, Red nose, red nose, a funny sight, big as an apple and twice as bright. All the reindeer loved to play games. They played tree tag and snow slide and tumble bones, but Rudolph was never asked to play. He stood behind a pine tree and watched. He was very lonely. Rudolph couldn't even play hide-and-seek with the rabbits. His glowing red nose gave him away every time. Before Christmas Eve, Santa's elves posted a sign on the gate to Toyland. Santa's team choosing time, the sign said. All the reindeer were asked to line up at 8 o'clock in the meadow. Santa Claus was coming to choose the team that would deliver presents to every good little boy and girl in the world. The reindeer fairly danced with excitement when they heard the news. They pranced and tossed their antlers and pawed the snowy ground with their hoofs. Each reindeer hoped he would be chosen to guide Santa's sleigh. It was the greatest honor a reindeer could have. Rudolph sighed. He was so ashamed to have Santa see his bright red nose, so he decided to hide. In the meadow, all the reindeer in Toyland, except Rudolph, stood in a line while Santa inspected them. Santa chose carefully. Only the fastest, the strongest, and the best reindeer would do. I think Dasher will be fine. He's the biggest reindeer, said Santa. Dasher, wrote his elf assistant in a big book. And Dancer is the strongest, said Santa, pulling his beard. Dancer, wrote the elf. Ho, ho, let's see, continued Santa. Here's Prancer and here's Vixen. They make the smoothest landings on rooftops. Comet is the fastest and Cupid is the most sure-footed, said Santa. I pick them. And last, said Santa, I choose Donder and Blitzen. They're the best at twisting over treetops and skimming over telephone poles. The reindeer and Santa's team were very happy. They rubbed noses. They danced and clinked their antlers together. Even the reindeer who weren't chosen were given good jobs one was to try out electric trains. Another was to cuddle Christmas kittens. The only reindeer without a job was Rudolph. He wanted to help, but he knew he would be laughed at. At last, it was Christmas Eve. Santa and his elves were busy packing the sleigh. I don't care if they do make fun of me, said Rudolph suddenly. I want to help too. I'll bring Santa's team a pail of nice cool water, he decided. They'll get thirsty on their long journey. The night was bitter cold and a terrible fog covered all the earth. Santa's elves kept bumping into each other as they hitched up the team. They could hardly see as they put on each bright red harness and tied each jingle bell. To make matters worse, Dasher and Dancer were fighting over who was to be lead reindeer. I was chosen first, said Dasher, stamping angrily. But you always trip over the moon, said Dancer, kicking a fallen star. Even Santa was cross. We'll never get there if you two don't stop quarreling, he said. 
And where is my Christmas list? Dash it all, I can't see a thing in this fog. Just then a soft red glow lit up the snow. Thank goodness, said Santa, suddenly jolly again. I found my list. Ho, ho. I must have tucked it in my belt. Who brought this fine lantern, asked Santa. I must take it with me. Why, I can see perfectly now. It's not a lantern, said Rudolph, trembling. The light comes from my, my nose. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, said Santa. I'm certainly glad to see you. Your light will guide my sleigh tonight. I appoint you head of my team and number one reindeer in all the world. Rudolph held his head high. Proudly he pranced to the front of the team. All the other reindeer bowed. Donder and Dancer helped Rudolph put on his harness, and Cupid gave him a beautiful sprig of holly berries. Then down, down through the clouds and over the sleeping houses, Santa and his team flew on that foggy Christmas Eve. And leading the whole procession was Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. So if you see a soft glow in the sky on Christmas Eve, you can be sure that Rudolph, the most famous reindeer of all, is very near. All right, I want you to look, look for his nose on Christmas Eve. All right, now I want us to do a little flannelboard story about Rudolph. Now you can see he doesn't have a nose. I want you to see if you can help me decide what color nose he needs. All right, and what color, what color nose I'm about to put up. All right, Rudolph, Rudolph, what will you do? You can't guide Santa if your nose is blue. All right. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to fly at night. You'll be quite a sight if your nose is what? White. Good. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa give a wink. What will Santa think if your nose is pink? Bet you guessed it there. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa has his sack. But you're not ready if your nose is... What do you think? Black. Good. Rudolph, Rudolph, you're such a silly fellow. Who will know it's you if your nose is, if you can guess it, yellow, right. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to go to town. Santa will wear a frown if your nose is brown. Yeah, you're getting those rhyming words. Rudolph, Rudolph, the children are in bed. Now I know you're ready because your nose is red. There, that's just how he's supposed to be. Good job. Now I'd like to read a story about another one of Santa's reindeers. This is Dasher. This is a beautiful book, beautiful pictures. I'd like to thank the author. Matt Tavares, and the publisher, Candlewick Press, for allowing me to share the book with you. Dasher. Life was not easy for the reindeer family of J.P. Finnegan's traveling circus in Menagerie. They spent long days crammed together under the hot sun as an endless stream of curious people jostled to catch a glimpse of them. Even at night, there was little rest. Some nights, to pass the time, Mama would tell stories. It was a magical place, she would say. The air was crisp and cold, and the ground was always covered with a cool blanket of white snow. Your father and I were free to roam under the glow of the North Star. Dasher, the youngest reindeer, loved Mama's stories. Is that the North Star, Mama, she asked. The very same, Mama said. We always knew we were home when it was directly overhead. I wish we could go there, said Dasher. Mama sighed. I do too, she said, but Mr. Finnegan is not kind to animals who try to escape. Day after day, under the watchful eye of Mr. Finnegan, the reindeer family delighted crowds wherever they went. Dasher liked being with her family, and she loved meeting so many children who were always kind to her. Sometimes they even fed her carrots, which were her very favorite food. But at night, while the others were sleeping, she would lie awake, gazing at the bright star on the horizon 
wishing for crisp, cold air and cool blankets of white snow. One night, mighty wind shook the circus tents and rattled the animals' cages. Dasher was wide awake, wishing on the North Star, when she was startled by a loud creak. The gate to her pen had swung open. Dasher could hear rustling from inside Mr. Finnegan's trailer. She glanced up at the North Star. She looked back at her sleeping family. She knew that this might be her only chance. Her heart pounded. She took a deep breath. And then she ran as fast as she could. On she went for hours with the North Star as her guide. But no matter how far she traveled, it was still way off on the horizon. Dasher began to wonder if she would ever make it there. She thought about turning back. She couldn't remember the way. She didn't know what to do. So she looked up at the North Star and made a wish. Just then, Dasher heard something in the distance, a soft jingling coming from the woods. There in a clearing, Dasher saw a man and a horse. I'm sorry, Santa, said the horse. The sleigh is just so heavy this year. The man smiled. Now don't you worry, Silver Bell, he said. We'll take all the breaks you need. But the children, said the horse, they'll be heartbroken if we can't deliver all these toys by Christmas morning. Children, thought Dasher. She stepped forward. Maybe I can help, she said. Hello there, said the man. Dasher walked closer. The man smiled. Have you ever pulled a sleigh, he asked. Dasher shook her head. I've never even seen a sleigh, she said, but I pull a wagon just about every night. Well, said the man, how would you like to make a whole bunch of children happy by Christmas morning? I would like that very much, said Dasher. Santa thanked Dasher and attached her harness. It was soft against her fur and its jingling bells made the most beautiful sound she had ever heard. Santa climbed into his sleigh. Dasher pulled with all her might. Then suddenly, the load felt lighter. Dasher looked down. They were flying. All night, Dasher and Silverbell pulled Santa's sleigh through the air as Santa guided it from rooftop to rooftop, delivering toys to children everywhere. Dasher had never experienced such a thrill, and she ate so many carrots, she felt like she would burst. She was having so much fun, she forgot all about the North Star. As the first light of dawn appeared on the horizon, they landed. The air was crisp and cold. The ground was covered with a cool blanket of white snow. Dasher searched for the North Star on the horizon, but couldn't find it anywhere. Santa smiled. Dasher, he said, look up. And there it was directly overhead. Is that the North Star, she asked. Santa's eyes twinkled. Merry Christmas, he said, and welcome home. The North Pole was just as wonderful as Mama's stories. Dasher roamed wherever she pleased, and Santa gave her all the carrots she wanted. But something was missing. I love it here, she told Santa, but I miss my family. I wish we could be together. Santa smiled. That's your best wish yet, Dasher, he said. Let's go find them. Late that night, Dasher guided Santa's sleigh all the way to J.P. Finnegan's traveling circus in Menagerie. Mama, Papa, Dasher whispered, everyone wake up. Mama lifted her head. Dasher, she said, is that really you? It's me, Mama, said Dasher. She told her family all about Santa and Silver Bell and how the North Pole was just as amazing as Mama's stories. But I miss you, she said. You were all I wished for. Dasher led her family to Santa's sleigh and Santa attached their harnesses. You're not going to believe this part, she said. When Christmas Eve arrived, Silver Bell watched as Santa prepared his team. Are you sure you don't want to come, asked Dasher. I'm sure, said Silver Bell. I know the eight of you will do a fine job. Late that night, as Santa and his new team of reindeer soared around the world, he called them by name for the very first time. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. On Christmas morning, after all the toys had been delivered, they flew back to the North Pole, where they still live happily today. There the air is crisp and cold. 
the ground is always covered with a cool blanket of white snow, and Dasher has everything she ever wished for. Well, all right. I hope you enjoyed those reindeer stories, and thank you so much for joining me at Bluebell Storytime.